I just received and tested the brand new IDAS NBZ2 filter from IDAS and I can't find any other reviews from the other big channels on YouTube so I think I'm the first one to post a review of this filter. That is surprising to me because the original IDAS NBZ filter and some of its newer iterations such as the IDAS NBZ UHS and the IDAS NBZ EX were quite popular. Uh, mainly because unlike the Optlong L Extreme uh, and Optlong L Enhance and some of the other filters that were available at the time, the IDAS NBZ did not produce any halos on fast optics. So I was particularly interested in the NBZ version 2 because it does offer a narrower band, so it'll offer even better performance. And I'm expecting the same excellent performance without any halos. And at the end of this video, I'll give you all the other information you need to know. So let's get started with the tests. So to test the halo performance of the IDAS NBZ2, I imaged a very bright star to start, that is Capella, one of the brightest stars in the sky at magnitude 0.05. And then I went to fainter and fainter stars such as Menkalinan, Mahasim, and Seklatani, which were at magnitude 1.9, 2.65, and 3.65 successively. Then I looked at some single and stacked exposures, and then I also compared an image with and without the filter. So let's get started looking at the very, very bright star Capella. Now this is a single 60 second exposure at gain zero using a Celestron C11 Edge HD F2 with Hyperstar. So it is an extremely demanding system and any halos in the system will show up right away. So at magnitude 0.05, you can see that in a 60 second exposure, there is almost no halo. You can see the faintest hint over here, which I'm not even sure is going to show up on the actual video, but on my high resolution 4K monitor, I can see the slightest hint over here on magnitude 0.05 Capella. Now moving to a fainter star, we will pull up Menkelinen, which is magnitude 1.9, still a very bright star. And on a 60 second exposure, I can't see any halo at all. If there is anything, it's lost in the background noise. So absolutely nothing to mention in a 60 second exposure at F2. Now up next, we will look at Mahasim. Now this is also a fairly bright star at magnitude 2.65. It's very easily visible to the naked eye. And looking at Mahasim, there is absolutely no halo. I'm going to zoom in at 200%, absolutely no halo around that. So that is excellent performance and much better than what I've seen in some of the other video reviews of uh, some of the other similar products that work at this fast focal ratio of F2. Now up next, is another star. We're going one magnitude fainter. This is Seklatani, and this is magnitude 3.65. That's the bright star in the very center. Now we zoom into 100%, and again, absolutely no hint of a halo at a 60 second exposure at f2. So again, zoomed in at 200%, absolutely no hint of a halo. So that was a good test, but how does it perform? on actual targets, not just stars, because I don't think you'll be just, you know, getting eight hours of data on Capella just to test a filter. So I pulled up a single image of the Horsehead Nebula. Now this is a single image of 360 seconds or six minutes at gain zero at F2 with my C11 Edge HD. And again, you can see a lot of detail in a single exposure. And again, this is a single exposure from a Bortle 6 to 7 site. And just the amount of detail visible over here is phenomenal. Uh, and in terms of halo performance, this is the very, very bright star Alnitak. This is a magnitude 1.65, I believe. Uh, let's double check Alnitak over here. And again, this is a six minute exposure at F2. So this is very, very demanding. Uh, you're not going to get much more demanding than that. So Alnitak right over here in Orion, we'll zoom in there. There we go. Yes, Alnitak is magnitude 1.85. So a very, very bright star. And on the very, uh, very, very 
I guess, long exposures that we are using here, a six minute single exposure uh, under very good transparency. Uh, you can just make out a faint halo over here. Again, it's not something I would consider objectionable, especially considering this is the best performance I've seen from any filter, uh, including some of the other ones such as the Anthlia and the Optolong L Extreme F2 that some of the other channels reviewed, uh, such as the, the amazing Luke at Luco Medical. Uh, so, yeah, that's barely visible, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. This is at 100%, so barely a hint of a halo visible, uh, but it is there. Um, and on the star up here, this is a magnitude four star, the brighter one. Even on a six minute exposure at F2, there isn't even a hint of a halo on the fourth magnitude star. So that is great. Um, and now you might be wondering how this compares to the same view without a filter. Now here is a single image of this region without a filter. And again, you can actually see that halo over there. So this is absolutely no filters, no UV IR cut, nothing else at all. Uh, just the built-in uh, AR window of the ASI 2600MC Duo. Um, so as you can see, that little halo is still there. So what we are going to do is we're going to compare these two images side by side. So let's zoom in to see if the halo is being caused by the optics of the C11 Edge HD itself or if it is in the filter because we don't want to blame the filter if uh, <laughs> if it's the optics themselves. So as you can see, without a filter, the halo is still there. With a filter, it looks a little bit smaller, but that is, I think, because I had to change the back focus distance to account for the thickness of the filter. So uh, that could actually be just from the optics themselves. Yep, it's about the same intensity, uh, just a little bit smaller because of the change in back focus distance. So actually, yeah, I don't think this, um, even on a six minute exposure, I don't think the IDAS NBZ2 has any halos because when we looked at Capella, which is a much, much brighter star, even though that was a 60 second exposure, there was yeah almost no halo. We'll pull up Capella again. There we go. It was the, the slightest hint, but again, it looks like that was from the optics, not from the filter. So I think we have to we have to vindicate the filter even on Aln Attack, which is one of the most difficult targets you will ever image. So if the halo exists without the filter, yeah, it, the, the filter does not have a halo there either. Uh, so let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's pull up a stacked image. This was a stacked image with the IDAS NBZ2. Uh, 2.4 hours under very good transparency. And the only thing I have done over here is uh, done some gradient correction to remove the gradients in the very corners and uh, color calibration to make sure we are getting correct color. That's it, no other processing, no unsharp mask, uh, no contrast enhancements, nothing at all. So this is what I would consider a very good image of this region and we'll compare it. I took the same uh, same overall integration time without any filters and I calibrated it exactly the same way and I did the same gradient correction for the corners and the same color calibration to make sure we are getting accurate color. And this is with no filter at all, not even a UV IR cut filter. And this is the same 2.4 hours of total exposure time. So this is with no filter. This is with the IDAS NBZ2. So I just wanted to give you an idea of whether or not the filter offers any advantage. And as you can see from my Bortle 6 site, in that direction, it was a solid Bortle 6. It offered a massive advantage, I would say. I mean, if you look at the top corner region over here, the filtered image has much lower noise. And as you can see over here, this one is a bit noisy. Uh, if we zoom in at 100%, as you can see, yep, definitely more noise is visible in the horse head over here. And again, I haven't done any noise reduction at all. So this is just showing the performance of the filters. And yeah, in the body of the horse head over here, you can see a lot more grain, whereas in this one, barely any grain. So the filter did do a great job. And as any of my viewers would know, I'm not a big fan of light pollution filters because I don't think they work that well if you're using a broadband light pollution filter. I just image without any filters uh, whenever I can. Uh, but 
uh, narrow band filters or dual band filters definitely work as you can see from this result and the transmission on it is absolutely excellent. That's always one of the concerns with a filter such as the IDAS NBZ2, uh, filters that are specifically made for fast optics that you know they may not live up to their advertised transmission. But in this case, I have absolutely no issues believing the transmission rates. And the NBZ2 does have some of the highest transmission uh, available for H Alpha and O3. So I'm happy with that. And looking at the halo on Allen attack again, let's zoom in to 100%. Uh, you can see that there is a halo on Allen attack without any filters as well as with the filters. And again, the halo is smaller because of the difference in back focus length. It doesn't look like the filter is introducing any halos on its own on the bright stars. So phenomenal performance definitely the best i've seen out of any of the current competitors in this field for fast focal ratios now one thing that i did notice that i have to point out on this side on the right side i notice this little purple artifact it's very very minor and it's only visible you know because we have uh, calibrated this image very accurately and done a long integration on it uh, on the opposite side of Allen attack, you can see this little artifact. And I've seen this on many, many optical systems, especially Schmidt Cassegrains. And if we look at the NBZ, although that artifact doesn't exist because of the different uh, back focus uh, length now with the filter in there, uh, it has moved a little bit to the right and you can see a bit of a halo. Uh, it's a very, very faint halo. Uh, caused by Alnitag being on the other side of the frame. Now, if Alnitag was in the center, this halo would probably be very diffuse and around that and likely not visible. But because of the positioning of Alnitag, you can see this very faint halo in the IDAS NBZ uh, stacked image, which you cannot in the uh, in the unfiltered image. Instead, you see this little purple artifact in the unfiltered image. Now, I don't find this objectionable at all. It can be corrected, and there aren't really any other targets in the sky that are imaged as often that have such a bright star in the field of view, like Alnitak and the Horsehead Nebula. So not something you need to worry about. You can see this magnitude four star up here, which is normally what you would be imaging if there is a bright star in your field of view, and no artifacts being caused by that, no halos or anything that isn't also present in the unfiltered image. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this filter. Uh, I couldn't have expected better performance than this. This is just absolutely phenomenal and mind-blowing. And I think for anybody who does have fast optics, such as a Rasa or a Hyperstar, uh, or even a Rokinon 135F2 lens like what uh, I use, then this filter should be at the top of your list. And now I do plan to test this filter at slower focal ratios as well, uh, because that's one of the reasons I got it, even before I knew how well it would perform in terms of halos. Um, I'm planning to use it on my slower optics as well, and that'll be one of the tests I'll be doing in the future, is testing it on my refractor and possibly some even slower optics to see if it maintains its transmission. Because none of the other competitors, such as the uh, Antlia filter or the Optolong, uh, advertise that they can work on the slower optics. They are only made for fast optics, whereas the IDAS is made for both fast and slow optics, uh, with the only caveat being that it's a little bit wider in terms of its bandwidth. Uh, in H alpha, it transmits uh, 10 nanometers, whereas in O3, it has a band pass of eight nanometers, whereas the competitors are seven nanometers for both in the case of the Optlong L Extreme F2 and five nanometers for the Antlia F2. Now, that's not a big difference. The stars would look a little bit smaller in those, but uh, with the star reduction techniques we have now, that's not a consideration at all. For example, we could use Blur Exterminator to compensate for that if we need to. So if, for example, I use Blur Exterminator at the default settings, so you can see before, after, before, after. Uh, and I will continue processing this image, and then I'll let you know what the end result looks like. I had recently processed this unfiltered image, and I'll be sharing that as well, because the final product looks much, much better than this simply stretched but unprocessed image. So thanks again for watching, and if you did find this review helpful, consider using one of the affiliate links in the description below uh, if you want to order this filter. And Agena Astro is the only place that actually has them in stock, and that's where I had ordered mine. 
so by using one of the affiliate links below you'll be supporting this channel at absolutely no cost to you so I can do more reviews like this and this review was not sponsored in any way by anybody I uh, bought this filter for myself as a birthday present recently so this was all my own money okay thank you again for watching and clear skies